Crossroads Media. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. The Sixers, through three games, are making me happier than I ever would have thought in a billion years. The two-man game between Maxi and Embiid has sucked me into enjoyment, okay? I mean, I had a blast watching Embiid, who was supposed to not play today in the home opener on a second half of a back-to-back, but I'm sure glad he did. Did you see that stat line? 35 points in 29 minutes, 6 blocks, 2 steals, 7 assists, 15 rebounds. I think I saw DeAndre Ayton cry, swear to God, he was sitting there on the bench. Tears flowing. I cry all the time when I jump on my bookie because I'm winning so much damn money right now that I feel I'm living on a different Kim Kardashian level. You know what I'm saying? And look, when your money's on the line, you want to choose a trusted sports book that gives you tools to win, like my bookie. So, my bookie has daily odds boosts, same game parlays, and you can take advantage of huge prize pool contests. What you do is sign up using promo code BROADS on your first deposit, and you receive up to $200 in cash. I'm giving it to you right now. That's promo code BROADS to claim your own cash bonus right now. They have the My Bookie money bag that's active where you can grab a potential Super Bowl front runner at long shot odds like plus 38,000 on Eagles Chiefs. You won't don't find odds like this anywhere else. So bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only at my bookie. Check out the information down below. Joel Embiid celebration. I do that when I'm winning my bets, I swear to you. With the DX, I, I honestly thought that he blacked out. Either he just flat out didn't care that he was going that hard, or he was in his feels and it was an, a, a, an outer body experience and he forgot that he was in front of 20 plus thousand I wouldn't even do that if I was playing at the local gym, all right? If I was playing pickup at a random court, now maybe because I'd uh, probably get sucker punched in the jaw because who would show someone up like that on the on the floor? But he's doing this in NBA action. He's doing this against real NBA athletes. I love him to death. I love Joel Embiid to death. I love Tyrese Maxey to death. I love the way these two were playing. Joel Embiid rolling to the basket is a force. So between those two and the pick and roll, feed me more. And even the dribble handoff, I'm obsessed with it. I'm loving it. I don't know what else to say other than I'm finding pure joy watching what Nick Nurse has done and just those two in general. And someone pointed this out to me before, and it was after yesterday's episode and before today's show, so this would make sense to talk about it now. How much do I think that Tyrese Maxey learned from James Harden during last year's playoff run? And just in general, from a teammate sense, you saw both of them actually laughing on the bench today when they were communicating during one of the stretches where Maxey wasn't on the court. And, you know, uh, I think that there's a lot of respect. Joel Embiid and all these guys, they have spoken. P.J. Tucker... When you're in the fraternity, you look at it completely different. The the whole nonsense that James Harden is going through compared to how we see it from a fan level. So they don't have any bad beef. Anyway, the question was more about what you thought, and you being me, about Maxi picking up on how to facilitate from Harden. Say what you will about James Harden. He does pass the basketball beautifully. He sees the floor like no other. He is fantastic setting up an entire team. Of course, I think that there's learning involved. Tyrese Maxey is known as someone who's obsessed with the game. That dude watched. That dude absorbed. And he applied a ton to his repertoire Throughout the offseason. His shooting is on a different world right now. Picking up the ball late in the shot clock. Turns around. I don't know why I said clock like that. But the shot clock's expiring. He turns around. He fades away. Nothing but net. It's got to be infuriating defending this man. Because whether he wants to kill you with his speed. Chauncey Billups is talking about it pregame. I don't know what to do with this guy. Me neither. 
other than sit back, relax, put the recliner up, and enjoy the 48 minutes of hoops. 26 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. In his first three games, he has three turnovers total. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I did the LA Night Yeah thing again. I forget what show it was, but we had a caller do it. So it's just, I don't know, popping up again. L.A. Knight, can't wait to see him versus Roman Reigns. <laughs> anyway, this isn't the time for WWE. Springer had another fantastic block. The problem is he picked up four fouls in, what, six seconds? Had to have been. Can't imagine it was any longer than that. If you want to get playing time, you can't be picking up that many fouls and then going on the bench. I saw Cork Moss, <laughs> which is hysterical because before the game got to the crap and it got to the nonsense and it's basically all your bench pieces, I thought about Furcon Cork Moss and I thought about the time that he demanded himself to play or to be traded and he swears he's Kobe. He swears that he's Michael Jordan. Bro, you're Furcon Korkmaz. And here's another coach that is a very, very respected coach. And his basketball mind thinks the same that Doc did. Get away! Get away! I don't want to see you ever touching the floor. He used to be one of your saviors. Not just guy. Not just role player. He was a savior in regards to spacing the floor because you were so desperate. Furcon, I went to a game he dropped, I think, 36, 37 points. The episode right before I called him an absolute bum, of course he would drop 35 plus the night I had to watch him. I I can't believe it. I can't believe I spent my hard-earned money and the way I got rewarded was a Furcon Corkma show. You can find yourself, though, going down to the Wells Fargo Center to catch some of these winter sports teams, maybe catch a birds game at the link. What if I told you I can give you free money to go get your tickets? That's right. If you click the link down below in the description at TickPick, it utilizes promo code BRODES right for you. It's on automatically active, and you can find yourself in a situation where bro hands you a $10 bill and say, take it, use it, put it towards getting yourself to a game, and you know they have the best price. Here's why. They have a best price guarantee, meaning that their ticket prices will beat any of the major competing marketplaces, and they're so confident that they guarantee it. If you find the same seats elsewhere at a, at a different spot other than TickPick, they give you 110% of the price difference in form of TickPick credit. So better price, same seats. There's no such thing. And the upfront pricing. So no more doing the math in your head to prepare for how much you plan on spending on top of the listed price on other sites. The price you see at TickPick is the price you pay at checkout, period, end of story. You must click the link down below. It'll bring you right to the site with everything already involved in uh, in checkout. So do that and get yourself to a game so you can watch Tobias Harris have an extremely consistent night. He's Mr. Efficiency currently. He is constantly finding the basket. He is scoring in a very, very, very successful rate. He shot the ball 8 of 11 today, and he was plus 31. Oubre gets on the board in double digits again. Another offer in regards to knocking down shots out by the perimeter. I imagine eventually they will start falling here because he's 0 for his last 10. If we date back to his last game, I think he finished 0 for 6 that night. So he's 0 for 10 in his last two games. They'll start to fall, though. There's other pieces to his game that I do admire. I could see the effort defensively. Not that I'm telling you every single defensive possession is a masterpiece, but there is a lot to, you could tell he's bought in and he's absolutely giving Nick Nurse everything he has. And there are some tendencies that I I love in, in, in that aspect. And then I think cutting too. I saw some good cuts, specifically more in the game against Toronto on the road. And they come to your building next. 
So you get them on Thursday, a little breathing room after, I guess, it took them a while to get in from Toronto and to go through customs and get back in Philadelphia. I think the broadcast mentioned something along the lines of getting back at 3 a.m. and resettling and then having to play a a basketball game on a second half of a back-to-back. I just think it's comical that we were ever judging Joel Embiid, wondering if he'd take the floor. And if there was ever a doubt, What are we doing here? Game three of an NBA season home opener and Joel Embiid might sit? Was it a smoke screen? And why are we throwing smoke screens to a young Portland Trailblazer squad that are learning this league as it goes? This is one where you go back to the drawing board if you're Billups and say, you you, want to compete as a top four team in, in, in a conference? Well, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on the road, playing in that level of atmosphere. Nice building tonight. Nice building. It'll get more intense, I feel, as they play more games and we get to game 20, game 25. Imagine what these two, Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, are going to look like 25 games into the season. I'm already obsessed with the way they pass the basketball. I'm already loving Joel Embiid rolling to the basket, whether I see a drop step with him going full speed, crazy spin, Euro, Name it, name it. He'll probably do it to you. And poor DeAndre Ayton. I would be so pissed if I was a big man and I looked at the schedule and saw, damn it, you got to be shitting me. Coach, my ankle. I think I, I rolled it in shoot around. Please, give me the off day today. I, I can't, I can't. Start hobbling. Maybe get a pair of crutches and fake it, wrap it up bandages, cast, do whatever. Do whatever you have to do. Never play against Joel Embiid. I don't want that gesture to happen after I get dunked on. So many blocks for this team. Maxie had 10 rebounds. I just said that so nonchalantly. 26 points. Say that nonchalantly too. 10 rebounds. 10 rebounds for our guard. Going back to the whole... What do you do with James Harden thing? I love the fact that James Harden could get you some boards. Now Maxi got it for you. Double digits. Kid's something else, man. The kid's something else. He's a maniac. He's going to do what we asked was possible. We asked if it was possible that he can continue to take leaps because the one massive jump we all recognized from that first year was incredible. To think that that can happen season after season after season is just an extremely rare ask. Not many can because he was at a nine, eight, you can polish your game. And I said nine, eight, thinking of a one to 10 scale. You can always polish your game. But in regards to percentages, it was percentage shooting from deep. Well, now it's consistency and percentage. Now it's range and keeping up percentage. It's, it's everything. It's getting teammates involved. It's not turning the ball over. It's willing to defend and keeping up the pace offensively while also committing to the defensive end because sometimes something has to give. You have to give a little to get a little. Well, if I want to improve my defensive intensity and I want to become a plus defender and I want to work on what can be something awesome with Joel Embiid protecting the rim, scaring others to even penetrate, so when you force them outside the three-point arc, what can you do? And can you be a savage and annoying and a pest? Well, sometimes I, I may have to take a step back and leak some oil, offensively speaking, because why well, I, I need that extra juice on the D end. There's no such thing with Maxi. The only time I've ever seen something like this, and you're damn right I'm about to give this person credit, which I did not see that happening at all in today's show, Ben Simmons had that motor. Ben Simmons could play 46 minutes and the entire time be a 1,000% effort. Here's the argument already made for you. I got it. Well, his legs sure ain't getting tired. 
because he ain't putting up jumpers. <laughs> While Maxi, nonstop lifting off the air, nonstop lifting off the court, nonstop drilling three, drilling three, drilling three. One, 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 one guy actually played the sport. The other half played the sport. I don't know. I don't know. I know Ubre made his free throws, though. For looking at what some of the free throw percentages look like in game one against Milwaukee. I'm see I'm seeing some free throws go down. Hallelujah. We need them free throws. Okay. All right, let's hit the phones. Anytime hotline. Do not let James Harden touch the basketball court with the seventy sixers again. I mean, Joel Embiid is doing his thing. Tyrese Maxey, man, he's calling his own his own number so much more now, and it's so great to see him hit all these shots. Kelly Oubre is an awesome burst of energy off the bench. I'm not even a big. I've never liked Patrick Beverly, but hey, man, he seems to be the right fit for this team within the first three games. <laughs> I do not want to see James Harden touch the court here for the Sixers because I'm actually really enjoying the Sixers team so far, which I wasn't expecting. Just do not let Harden get off or get on the court. Please, man. I don't know if we'll see James Harden. I really don't. The last I touched on the James Harden thing, I was fully invested in the Phillies run. So when a lot of that Joe, uh, James Harden stuff w- was really active in the streets and was really being talked about. I had a World Series championship in mind. I was focused on some other things. So when I first touched on it, I was going with very brief knowledge of how it all went. See, now I'm starting to believe that they're, they're setting out info and putting out info so they can maneuver through possibly some fines and because now the league's checking in to see why he isn't playing and what the team's view on it is and how James Harden feels and all that to come up with some conclusion. They're they're lying so James Harden doesn't have to play, making it look like he's trying to get out there, but he's not really trying to get out there, putting on a good face while the relationship is broken. He said he's never playing for Daryl Morey the liar ever again. He's not just going to take the court a couple months after making those claims and then going to strip clubs and having bottle service women put it on blast on one of those signs that they dance with over their heads. I, I believe he meant it when he said it. So, okay, fine. If you want out of here, you have to work with us a little bit. Show up on the bench, pretend you care, pretend you want to be there, and then we'll continue to milk the story And, well, he has to get his conditioning up. Well, he's not ready yet, and we don't want to put him in an uncomfortable position where his body isn't prepared. His body's either prepared or it's not prepared to play an NBA season right now. He either put in the work in the offseason to train his body so he could play for either the Sixers or for any other team that he gets traded to. We're a couple games into the NBA season right now. What are we talking about here? So that's why I don't think that we're ever going to see him they, they have a plan. Those two parties have a plan. And this is part of that plan. Show face. I love that Maxie's calling his number two. Nick Nurse probably called him, uh, called him into the office very early on, looked at him dead in the eyes. Maxie, this, this is Joel Embiid's team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're the guy from the perimeter. He needs help. You are the option. You have the number. You can always call the number. Go out there and play Tyrese Maxey basketball. Go be a scorer. Go apply pressure. Put teams on their heel. Make them scared of you, and then it opens up the rest of the court. When you start scoring and when you are the threat to maximize matchups, the rest of it will fall into place. The court will become more open, and the speed of the game, while everyone is looking like they're in slow motion because you're so quick. It'll slow down for you decision-making wise and you'll see the court and you'll see guys start to collapse because they know you're dangerous when you go to the cup. Now someone's wide open in the corner. Now you find Danny Green or P.J. Tucker and hopefully P.J. Tucker uh, takes the shot from the corner and, and, and drills the shot from the corner. Just throwing that out there. You know what I'm saying? I'd be shocked if 
all of the fan base, not all, 90%. We can never get everybody on the same page in this country. But 90% of people are with the caller, with the team and the games being enjoyable through the first three. Maxi really becoming an all-star level and a big, big, massive star in this league, which if he continues this up over the long haul, then that's exactly the trajectory that I see. That'll suck us back in. Yeah, that's different than running it back with James Harden. And you you know that he's old, and you know he's good for a couple 40-point games, but also due for a 3 of 18 from the field night as well. And in a seven-game series, three might be spectacular, but four stinkers are a huge, huge, huge factor. Well, this maxi thing is an unknown. What is his ceiling? How great can he be? What's the duo like with him beat, and how much does that maximize his play? The Harden boredom and the season that would be if they just ran it back without any drama between the franchise and him. I I think we all have an understanding on where that pops out. Maybe the interest in Tyrese Maxey, not knowing exactly what the ultimate ceiling is, just knowing it's extremely high, is that what gets us back on? I know that I've never left HelloFresh, so I don't have to worry about jumping back on. And if you haven't checked out HelloFresh, I need you to join me. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinnertime recipe rut. So keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week. There's always something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. I have a flatbread coming in, pineapple, barbecue, flatbread. I am so pumped at my favorite shrimp and mushroom risotto. My wife and I are obsessed, and I can't wait for it to come. I think it's coming on the first or the second. I'm going to check the second I get off this show because I'm I'm thinking about it nonstop. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive right at your doorstep, pre-portioned and ready to cook along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards. How easy is that? HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout. So that means you get an easy home-cooked meal on the table and money back in your pocket. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Broads, and you will get 50% off plus free shipping. That's go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Broads and use code 50Broads for 50% off plus free shipping. They are America's number one meal kits. My whole family started to order it. Didn't just change my life, changed my family's life too. Five minutes to cook, five, uh, five minutes to prepare, excuse me, 15 minutes to cook. Don't miss out. Okay, so some text messages. Sure. Some text on your 76er, 76ers. I love doing a nice Matt chord. Here's your Sixers. Stixers. Ooh, that was. That was bad. I do the, your Philadelphia 76ers, 76ers. That sucked too. That's not the one I'm thinking. Oh, Sixers dancers. Your Sixers dancers. I'm terrible. I would never do a good job. Matt Cord, you're the man. Okay. Lonnie texts in. Ha, 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 Smart man, Lonnie. Thank you. We love it, but we would love it. But would we love it if Jason Tatum or Jokic made that gesture? Probably not. But the big fella is back. Him and Maxie are something, and it's creating special. I would label that special. Yeah, it's creating special. Yes. If Tatum was going around throwing the DX sign or Jokic, would we mock it? Yeah, we'd we'd probably say, be more professional. You could say that about a lot of things, though. If Nick Sirianni did some of the things that he did on the sideline for the Dallas Cowboys, we would roast that dude every single second of every single day. So, yeah, there's no doubt about it. But because he's ours, then, oh, I don't have to worry about it. Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid. That's his personality. That's him. If I thought that that took away from his approach, if that took away from his ultimate best, 
well, then maybe I would feel differently about it. But I don't think that holds him back from being the best Joel Embiid. Now, asking if the best Joel Embiid happens to be good enough in a game seven and a game six down the stretch when he couldn't even get the ball in his hands because Harden wouldn't feed him the rock, that's a different question. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Joel Embiid's ceiling is getting you a championship. I'm willing to go down swinging and seeing if that's the case. But in regards to can Joel Embiid be the best Joel Embiid can be and the whole silliness and goofiness and personality, if that doesn't take anything away, then I don't really care too much about it. How should Nick Nurse, this person did not leave a name with the text message, how should Nick Nurse handle Harden now that he's on the bench? The same way he has been. I think he's handled it perfectly. Media-wise and basketball-wise, let Maxie cook. Let Maxie cook. And I, I, I think he sees exactly what's happening here. And he's such a smart man that I don't think he'll affect it. I don't think he's going to put his hands in the cookie jar and ruin this for himself. He sees it. He knows. He'll do what's right. He'll do what's right. All right, everybody. I love you to death. Go Sixers. They're fun. They're fun. Just enjoy it. They're fun. They're fun right now. I need fun. Because I'm watching the World Series and that's not fun. I need fun. Thank you guys all so much. I love you to death. We'll be talking soon. I'll see you on the next one.